Lamps, lamps, lamps. Everybody likes lamps. Well, we need light. So in this video, we will, well, you guessed it, model this floor lamp. In this uh, exercise, I will talk about kind of like the actual product, how I took measurements from it, how we analyze all the individual building elements, reduce it to what we only need, set up a scene, and then model everything. And as you can see, when I select these uh, individual groups, rotate it, then later into the position. So everything will be modeled nice and vertical. And then because we put in all these interesting joints here, we actually then have targets or snap guides to rotate our asset into position. Okay, let's get started. Before we continue, also just to say this, the reference images are inside the zip file and the link for that is inside the description of this video. Okay, no for real, let's go. Before we go into SketchUp, let's take a look at all the reference photos I created. We have here the complete product, just in a scale relationship to a side stand. There is a photo of the lower part of the lampshade, a photo of the upper part with the button and some of the mechanics, a photo of the joint and a photo of the base. And in addition, so we can better model this design in SketchUp, and there is also a quick sketch I created in Sketchbook, which is a free sketching app for iOS and Android. And it has a basic layout and some dimensions. Proportionally, this is not correct. This is only something I do quite often when I need to take notes of dimensions. I simplify the design a lot. So when I then later take a look at photos where I don't have dimensions, with the sketch, I understand what to build. Now let's go back to this image. So we would like to create a 3D model for this. Let's say a client has this or would like to have this. And we would like to put this, include this inside the interior design project. Let's say it's for a residential purpose. So why would we make this model? Well, simply for various reasons. First, it is a desired piece to have. With having this model inside our design, we have a scale relationship. We can visually prototype or verify, does the piece fit in? Will it look good? Now, do we need to model everything to the details? For example, all these elements we have here and there? Well, probably not. And um, that's the reason why it is very good to be able to model fast in SketchUp to create a presentation model of this. We're not going to make a model for mass production anyway, but more a model to communicate an idea. So when we take a look at this design, we can break this one down into the fundamental basic building blocks, a closed cone, an open cone, tube, tube, and a sphere. And as we see here, the sphere is actually split and uh, which is good, will help us actually when rotating everything. Now here we can see we have this extension and then this part, yeah, do we model this? Yeah, I mean, if we have too much time and don't wanna be paid for work that doesn't really matter and then we can do this. But in real life, no, we're not going to model this in. Actually, we're not really going to show it. Probably we will show the design more from here anyway. So again, what you don't see, we don't model. Okay, with all this done, let's go into SketchUp. Now in SketchUp, we will go to camera and set it to parallel projection. Then we'll go to window, model info, and under units, set it to decimal. And it's up to you here if you would like, for example, it to snap to quarter inch or half an inch or one-tenth of an inch, or just turn this off. 
I now, when we go to our reference image, that from here to here, this is 49 inches high. So that means I can draw here a line straight up, 49 inches, enter, and then I just draw a horizontal line. If I go now to a front view, I roughly have a visual reference. How high my uh, um, model here will be and this also helps before even model to bring in that reference image so we go to import and go to where we have the dimension sketch again all these images are inside a folder which you can download the link is inside the description click import then we position it there bring it to there very good so this way we, as you can see, we know how to what scale we can uh, scale this image. So it's not that we have an image that is 400 feet tall and then we're trying to model something that's just 40 inches. Okay, the rest here, then we can delete and we're ready to start. I would actually start with the base. That's pretty easy. So seven inches. 11 inches up and also here the tube is half an inch thick so ideally we want to have also here a flat tip not just this um, pointy tip okay so seven inches divided by three is 3.5 inches to the x-axis then from the center point straight up 11 inches Again, the tube on top would be half an inch diameter, and that is 0.25 inches of a radius. So I type in 0.25, and then we close this. There we are. Okay, now, since this is a revolve object, we can do that with the follow me command. For that, I need to have a circle. The circle, as you can see, I draw um, with the segments along the x-axis and then I can click on the ring here and say 32 segments to make it a little bit smoother and then this I move down along the z-axis cool now I can go ahead with my follow me command and click on this then see at one point does it create actually a good circle or cone? I mean, sometimes there are a little bit of some seizures. Okay, let's do this again. Yeah, thank you, SketchUp. Hmm, okay, one more time. Well, there, there it is. Click, and there we are. So you see it's, it's a little bit like Russian roulette. Uh, double, triple click, right click and make a group. We would like to put this into a tag, which we call base. So please put this element into the tag base so we can turn it on and off. Very good. Now, we have here now a tube that is 49 inches minus 11, so 38. On this part here, we would like to start. Um, but where is this intersection point? Please show me it. No, because um, there is maybe, how could I say that? Um, let's go to the top view. That's easier to explain what I wanted to do or to say. So when we go to the top view and zoom in, there we are. And we zoom in more that we can see center point and, uh, not center point, end point and end point. Escape and then here the same. You see, it's a nice plus because the amount of segments I used make sure that top left, top um, bottom, there and right, I have these points. And there is actually this endpoint, which is right there along the z axis. But um, 
if you click the wrong point on in here and do maybe something like this on purpose, I made this wrong. Obviously, this is not working. So what's a different way? So from the base here where we have x and y uh, touch each other, we just along the z axis, draw a line. There we are. So and then we can go to the circle command, click and along the x axis, then type in 0.25 and enter. So maybe hide the base and you see if there is now our ring. 32. This line here, we can select no and delete. That's it. So you see actually with this, um, with drawing this line and then showing the other object, it finds where this line intersects the face. And based on how we built everything nicely centered around the Z axis, we found this height point. Good. So I will hide this one more time. 32. Now this I delete. And now this we can extrude up 38 inches. Very nice. Double click, triple click, right click and say make group. And also this one into the base. Oh, interesting. Ah, uh, good this happened. You saw um, these caps were not with it. Yep. So what do we do to repair this? Actually very easy in case this happens in your case. Just explode the object. Now this, technically speaking, should automatically, and it does, fuse to it. So all we do, triple, quadruple, eight times, ten times, click on the geometry till everything is selected. You see when I double click, it selects this face and the edge, but not this face. Multiple clicks, then now everything is selected. That is good. Make group. Thank you. On to the base. Yeah, perfect. Okay, next object. How do we do the sphere? Super easy. Well, sphere is also a revolve object. So I need half of the ring filled and then revolve it. So to uh, to start, we do actually the same trick here again. From down there, I will draw a line up to there and escape. And then when I zoom in here, now I have this midpoint again. The diam diameter is 1.5 centimeter mil uh, inches, so 0 0.75 inches. There we are along the x axis 0 0.75 enter. Also, here let's set this to 32. Thank you. And now, when I go into the top view, here now we have to work really clean. So, there's an endpoint, there's an endpoint. What really helps me to make sure that this is the correct endpoint, you see the dashed line is really vertical. Here the dashed line is really horizontal. So click and click, very good. And then this line here we can remove. Perfect. Also, this long line we can remove. Now, this whole thing, we double click, select, rotate command, go to the midpoint, and then left mouse button, right mouse button. So in our case, it's a, the right mouse button, click, click along the y axis and then re rotate it 90 degrees. So when we look from the front, that's how it should look. Beautiful. So this profile, now we can select and then hope <laughs> uh, SketchUp will create for us. Or not. Let's give this a try again. 
see this is kind of kind of garbage uh what's happening here so undo follow me yeah um sometimes i also draw simply a new circle so here i make a another one also here again i set this to 32 maybe then move this whole thing along the zx up there okay so i don't have to zoom in and zoom out so crazy Yeah, it's a little bit frustrating as I think we can agree on that. There it is. Thank you. Perfect. So delete. Okay, very nice. Now, let's actually go to here and take a look at this. You can see that this piece is on the right side and then this is on the left side. So it's a little bit not centered. Should we continue doing this? Yeah, we could. We actually will keep it the way how it is so perfectly centered. But I would like to do something in addition. So I will go to the pen tool. Yeah. So click, click along the Y axis, click along the x-axis, click along the y-axis, I'm pressing the left and right arrow key. Uh, and then here, this endpoint, I, I drag over to there. Oh, there was this one line left. Mm, okay, let's delete this line. And then this, he actually does not have a filling. Okay, good. Let's try to draw this in there we are perfect so now why did i do this actually i'm going to extrude this up a little bit it's huge that thing triple click make a group very nice and then i simply along the z-axis move this one up to there okay so you I will turn into group two. And oh, good, this happens. So you see, um, I have actually some dirty geometry. So if I edit it, it tells me there's something, but I don't really see anything there. So maybe explode. Yeah, SketchUp tells me that there is something interestingly going up. Hmm. Let's see, it could be that I might have to rebuild this. So I don't know if this happened on your, on your side. Let's hope not. Let's go to Tools, Subtract, and then say, ah, uh, yeah, hmm, good, okay. Well, this is actually not ideal that this happened, but also it is good to happen. So I can show you what we have to do when there are problems. So you see that um, it says not a solid, but we made this a group. But you see there is something in there. If I double click and let's see, maybe unhide all. Is there something? Oh, look, there is a line. So let's delete this line. And you see this selection box is now smaller. Okay, so the solid tools only work with complete volumes. If there is a line or a surface that's not a volume, that doesn't work. Okay, so you see how I removed this. Then U minus U, up, opposite, U, remove from this one. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. Then we can um, maybe this, we copy, then paste in 
place and then right click and then we say flip along is it the red one uh, no so undo right click flip along green one uh it's there okay well yeah it's not really where it should be and when we do a flip along z yeah that doesn't really make any sense anyway okay good so this was 1.5 for diameter now this is half of a piece so 0 0.75 that means when i select this object and move it along the y-axis by 0 0.75 inches there we are so now there we have a complete piece again that's good okay before i continue i will select this this and this and make sure this is all inside this base one very good then i make a new tag and this one i will put into this tag and this tag we call maybe arm okay very nice this way then i have the bottom part and i have the top part cool okay this is from the base that is good so right click and hide and now i would like to build the next piece so this arm which is at or which is 13 inches long let's see can we find any intersection here oh this time the software was um reshading us okay it found actually this center in a group thank you so where is the x-axis so kind of like there so we model to the left so from there to the left 0 0.25 there we are then let's adjust the segment count 32 and then we extrude this up by was it 13 very good let's go back to this image one more time so 13 inches and then also you can see here something is a little bit longer because everything could rotate there this piece is one and a half inch okay so that means this we can select and then with the move command along the z-axis move 1.5 inches or you can also move this up 1.5 with the push and pull command or go down 1.5 and you see based on what direction i go it actually adds or it removes or makes it longer or shorter so that i don't have to go minus or plus it's basically i go up it goes up 1.5 inches if i go down it goes that direction 1.5 inches very nice let's triple click and make this a group now in this piece i would like to create again something oh thank you you found it you're so nice to me today so this one here maybe 0.3 we just make this kind of small 32 and then push and pull 1.5 triple click make group very good and then all this goes into arm very nice currently this has no group yet but we will add actually a group to that soon now all this is more or less done it's now time to take a look at the uh, lampshade and everything will be posed that's kind of like the term for it moved into position rotate into position later but while i model well you can model everything rotated if you want to make life hard for yourself or you can just simply model everything straight vertical because then it's very easy to do symmetry is perfect but it's along the z-axis and then later we rotate everything into position 
So this is eight inches, eight and a half. And then up here we have half an inch and quarter inch. Okay. So from here, four inches escape. Then from the center straight up along the Z axis, 8.5 inches. Very nice. And then I now, this goes over 0.25. This goes down along the Z axis. 0.75, then it goes along the x-axis, 0.25, and then I can connect this at the end. There. Okay. Now, I mentioned before, this is actually open. So, and if we want to render this also with two materials, we need to have two different faces. Currently in this model, if we would revolve this, we could remove the bottom part, but then we would have just one face. So we need to build the inner wall. Two ways how to do this. Quick way. We just go with the offset command. We can do that. And then we just, however, have to do a little bit of cleanup. I extend it there. And then also here, clean up. Let's see if this actually extends. Yeah, see it's difficult to extend it by its line or orientation. So I just simply draw an extension. You see it's magenta, very good. And then let's get rid of this stuff. So that was one way. Or let me undo. Other way, we just work with guidelines. So the tape, click and drag 0.1. And then here, click and drag 0.1 with the mouse. When I say click and drag, and then here now you see click, click, click on all these intersections. And then we use the eraser to get rid of everything. That's actually a cleaner geometry because down here, this is just one big line. Cool. Okay. So click so, cross fingers. There we are. Perfect. Triple click, make a group. This now finally can go. We don't need it anymore. This goes into the arm and let's go to the front view. And just along the Z axis, I move this one up and there we are. I would like to rotate the piece. So, hold on one second, where, yeah, Y axis is correct. So, click, click, and click. There we are. Very nice. Go to uh, this view, and then I drag this one maybe a little bit to here if I want to. Okay, and here's now a little trick. If we want to put down a little um, cylinder for rotation purpose, we could do this. So let's see, can we find this midpoint there? Yes, it did. Very nice. So how much is this? Um, maybe we make this thing simply 0.2. Enter. Uh, yeah, and this is 24, that is fine. Then we extrude this maybe by point two. Okay. Then double click, right click, make group. This whole thing now needs to be rotated. Uh, but ideally, rotated through the center and you see i don't really find anything there so i will do the following here's the midpoint i i find if you don't find this intersection then draw on this line again um, i need to figure out the correct axis x axis is it is right click uh, sorry left click and click 90 degrees click and we said this whole piece is 0.2 inches now it is actually right at the center there which is not good so this whole thing 
along what axis right click or left click so sorry right or left arrow key so left arrow key is y point one enter now this is perfectly centered okay good now here that we can see this sticks in that's bad but for what we try to do this is fine now these two objects i will um yeah what actually are they on so you you are on arm and you are on arm so let's you go to arm two and then these two groups i select and make a group okay then here all this i select and make a group two and then these two groups I select and make a group. So you see how I started nesting everything. Let's go to window and uh, is it an outliner? Yeah, I think it's an outliner. Look at that. There you see all the groups. Um, so for example, we could call this, this group here. That's actually shade. And then This group is maybe arm and then this whole group now we can call upper arm or arm because it's just arm and here when we go to base you see base is just or what we see in tags is just tags think about it like layers or groups folders and then the outliner that's where you see then all the objects we have Okay, so here's this indifferent piece. So when I hide this there, so all this, for example, I could group together, um, right click group. And this is the base. Okay. So why did we do all this? when i hide actually the base you see i can actually show and hide objects also here and even double click to go into edit so this is actually a pretty useful element too let's turn on this tag there we are so you see how this is rotated this whole arm now i would like to rotate there's the rotate command and because we have here uh, the sphere which we cut into two pieces we can find this midpoint there we are and then let's rotate this one 45 degrees very good so how can i now rotate this one well this is very easy so there is my shade you see i selected it go to rotate there is this piece there is the center point cool so now the question is now how much do we rotate it maybe there okay good so this little cylinder we created we simply made there so we have something to snap onto for the rotation yeah and look at that there we are now ready this piece we can put into another folder maybe reference sorry i said folder i should say tag it's a problem when you know and work in so many different programs sometimes i use different words another one uses collections i really like this term collections well tags is kind of like a collection too um yeah beautiful so the only thing, if we would want to do something, we could move actually this whole thing a little bit to the right, but not really the, the ball joint, or maybe everything, including the ball joint, we move a tick to the right. And then, because then this joint would be kind of here, select all this and move it also a tick to the right. But this is now a, kind of like a detail that, 
when we see the object from this distance in a rendering or this, you don't really see this. And we are not really zooming in to talk about interior design and getting that close to this object. Very good. That's it.